Hey everyone! To be honest, I don't like manual and repetitive tasks on a daily basis. Do you? Cyclone 3DR has an inbuilt functionality to write your own or run your existing scripts. Don't worry, scripting doesn't have to be difficult. Today, I will show you particular two scripts which you can run by yourself and if you want to change them, you will be able to do so. So, alright, let's get to it. Brilliant. Here we can see the rail extraction tool already existing as one of the scripts to create the track for the left and right side fully automated. What I want to see here and make use of it is not only to get the track itself, I want to see what is the width of one track to another to verify if this one has a correct dimension. So how do we do it? So I could go to the measure tool and pick from two points and do it just manually. Pick my left track, I pick my right track and I will see the distance between those two. This one I could follow through, do the next one and the next one, but this is not efficient. So what we can do, um, I can for example create a line between left and the right side and when I now have a look at the properties of the line I can see that we have actually already the lens in there. So how can we take advantage of the object properties? So I create automatically the perpendicular gauges every x meters fully auto extracted. So now I have all of that now I need to just access all of this information from the properties. And now I'll show you how to do it. First of all, we're jumping into our script tool and open our script. First of all, we want to define our object type. So I want to use lines and say from li as lines from selection, this is what I'm selecting. Then we're creating a reference, which will be here 1.440. Next thing, I want to have a loop which starts from my first selected object till to the rest of them. So this is what I'm doing here to the length of my selection. And then um, go for one plus the next one. In here, I'm creating a label. So as label, you can see that we have a lot of options here. I want to create a new label with run row and three columns. The label itself we need to define. So we define uh, the um, columns. The columns will be measure. It will be the reference. So we can scroll through where do and we can see what other options we have here. And we want to get also the deviation of it. What is left to do, we also need to define the row. So we set the line type and we say the label is here label.distance according to what we already did. And we can see the options coming up here. So now we need to assign the content to each of those points. So when we now say 00, zero means it will be the first object in there. And from the object, we want to get the length. So this one will be our 1.438 in our example here. The next, we want to define the reference. So it will be then 0, 1. And then we want to write in the our iref, our reference the 1.440. At the third one, we want to create the deviation of it. So it will be our two and then we want to have the length what we already have from the object which we currently have and then minus our reference what we need now is to define where we place our label so what we're doing here with p1 we get the start point so the first point of it 
as wizards XYZ coordinates and we create the endpoint P2. We create a new variable called attach point and we create a new and this attach point is a new point where we do a little mask between point one and point two to get our uh, to get the midpoint out of it. So we can see here our get x get y. So what we're doing here, we from the point P1 and P2, we get the X coordinate or the Y coordinate, or we get Z, the Z coordinate from this specific point. So what I want to do now, I want to add also a comment to it. So we see as label set comment, and I'm using here the number and then say plus, and then the selection what I have here which will be my i plus one. And then we attach the midpoint now and we assign it to our label. So now we want to also say how many decimal places we want to have it shown with. And I choose here three. All left to do is we want to add our label now to the document. So let's see this one now in action. So we first select all of it, we start our script and we can see that every single line has now attached a label. So we can see all the labels here. If we do a right click on it, we can also create a customized chapter in our report and we can directly go into our report. So here we can also uh, define which columns we want to see and we could also quickly export this one as a CSV file. For, to use it for further actions. So the question is now, what else can we use for the object properties? Here we have a graveyard. So here the task was to generate for each individual graveyard stone the square for uh, the management of this area. How do I get all these squares out from every single graveyard stone. It's easy. So I showed it in one of my videos before and here a little um, recap on it from the tree survey. So I generate from every single tree trunk a circle and then I get also my objects out of it. In a similar way I did it also with the graveyard stones. But here additionally to this information what is required for the asset management I need the highest point of each graveyard stone. So they are always different, but all of them are written in their properties. So we're just going back to our scripting tool and I will show you how it goes. First, we define our object type. So it will be a cloud or before it was a feature. Next, I want to create a string as my output text and I create a loop for every single object to run through. So here we want to get the center point as a reference point and then we assemble our output. The string is just a sequence of characters. The plus equal operator adds a value after each other. So we have x, then we have comma, y, comma. Next thing we want to get the highest point. For this we need the direction to so the vector 001. So we add our two results to z value. So if we select now all of our graveyard stones, run our script, so on the console we have now our result with x, y and the z value represents now the highest point of each individual object. We can bring it to AutoCAD, place it accordingly and voila, we have now all our data here and can further use it. Did you want to do this one manually? Let me know. I hope you like it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you want to see next and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye!